Hello, good evening everybody. Welcome, welcome to Creative Cravings. Hope you had a nice break, you had plenty to do. We had quite a long time, three hours to fill and we managed it, didn't we? Even yeah. to the point where we're like, whoa, it's um, gone very quickly. So I hope you had a nice time. What have you been getting up to? Let us know what you've been doing. Hi Michelle, how are you doing? I'm very well. Good. Very well. We've had, we've had something to eat, we've had a nice chat. Um, we've been tracking earthquakes, <laughs> don't ask. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. We've been, we've, been, we've been talking about stag do's. Oh um, yes, yeah. Because one of us, one of us, not me, obviously, is going to be getting married soon. So yeah, yeah. we've it's been. Not me um, either. <laughs> no, <laughs> we've been discussing what we're going to do to him on his stag do, and needless to say, he's not letting anyone know when he gets married. <laughs> And I love the fact that we just invited ourselves to his stag do. Know. You know, he had no choice in this matter. We were just like, right, we're going to be doing. Well, yeah, we do. We do know it's next year. Um, we know it's around about the time. Actually, if you got married and you had a stag do or hen do, let us know what what you got up to. Actually, keep it clean. Yes, is all I'm going to say. Just keep Pre it clean. Um, so message in um, Facebook, um, Instagram, um, Crofters Companion, for, um, YouTube. You can message in um, all sorts of different ways and let us know what you've got up to. Um, lots of people messaging in and joining today. Kimberly says, greetings from North Carolina, everyone. Bethan, um, got Lion, good evening, Michelle, Becky, and all the crew and Crafty family. Mary Beth says, hi again from Minnesota. Um, Rachel Norton says, hi there from Brighton Beach, South Australia, at 4.30 a.m. on Sunday morning, just home from babysitting. Wow. What were they doing until 4.30? Again, That's don't mental. answer. No. <laughs> that is a late one. You might just as well have stayed over. Yeah. Alicia says good morning and greetings from Arkansas. Um, Eileen says good afternoon, everyone from Puerto Rico. Carolyn, good morning, everyone from New York. Um, NC. New York City? NC. I'm not, I'm not sure what that is. Sorry. Uh, North Carolina, sorry. Mary <laughs> Reno says hello, everyone from Rainy, Maine. And Candice, Candice says hello, everyone from Western Nebraska. It's been a while since I've been able to join live. And guess who else says hello? Uh, ben McCarthy, by any Yeah, chance? hello, Ben. Hello it's it's ben. not a normal day unless Ben come, pops in and says hello, no, is it? No, yeah. even when, I must admit, even when I'm not on, uh, if I'm travelling home or if I'm doing something, he often still puts uh, the show on. I don't blame him. Yeah. You know, he should do. Yeah. He should do. Um, we've got um, lots of bits and pieces to show you, um, but do message in if you've got any questions. Um, so uh, Michelle's going to be here. She can answer um, any questions you've got, any at all just putting it out there any crafty questions that you may have you'll be able to get um, um the details of and um, maybe you've got you're a newbie you've only just started watching us this is a great opportunity for you to message in and ask some questions the, this is using our square nesting dies this is a multimedia die. All these samples I've got are for using fabric, but Michelle's going to show us a lovely project on how to use them with papercraft. So these nesting dies are our multimedia ones, or I like to call them a deep dish. Um, so you are going to be cutting through um, card, mount board, multi layers of card. You can be cutting through your fabrics. Absolutely brilliant for your fabrics as well. But um, I'm going to show you how you can use these to make your own card bases. Um, and again, if you have other nesting dies, you can use the, um, you know, the same techniques that I'm going to be showing you now with your normal nesting dies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the largest one of mine. Um, it's folded in half is this piece of card so you can be doing this with your triangle ones your circle your rectangle um, and obviously these ones as well your squares so I'm just going to pop this on here I'm going to tape it in place and all I've done is I've just left the top um, just hanging over so it's going to you know leave that um, that fold there so I've got my card base now, I know I'm showing you this with the square ones and you're thinking to yourself, well, I can make a square um, card base anyway. Yes, you absolutely can. But you're just going to use the same technique for your triangle ones and for your circle ones um, as I'm showing you with these ones as well. So let's pop this out and you can see straight away it's cut all the way through perfectly and beautifully. So let's just get that little bit of tape off. There we go. So let's move this to the side. 
So I have got my perfect card base and again you're going to be able to use your other nesting dies in this collection to do exactly the same thing. So what I'm going to do now is you're going to bring in a couple of your other dies and let's bring in this piece of black card. So even though they're a nesting die we're going to use two of these to cut a nice border. Mm -hmm. So let's pop those there. And again, we're going to tape them down because we don't want them to move at all. So we're going to pop this through here. Yay. And so I've got my base here. And I've got a few more already cut out for you in a few different colours. So let's just grab my plates. So they come through. So let's pop that to the side and you can see. So what we're going to do is we've got a lovely border there. We've got a thicker border here that I've popped onto some foam. So you're going to build that up and then all you're going to do with this, if I just move that to the side quickly, you're going to just cut lots of your mats and layers out and we're just going to put them all on a little bit staggered just for a change to being on the normal way and if I bring in just this last one um, and if I just hold that for you you can see that just using those nesting dies you can create a really beautiful focal point on your cards. Fabulous, makes it nice and easy. So this is an example of using multimedia for these dies. So you've got this bag here and then we've got a cushion here with those overlapping um, squares. So these are your multimedia nesting squares. Now these, Michelle, I love the fact that you're using them for paper craft because obviously I use these for um, fabric because they are, like you say, you're, they're thicker dies so they cut through thicker, fa thicker items. So you can you cut them with... Um, sort of corrugated cardboard, couldn't you, to make yeah. it a you know, really sort of three-dimensional kind of um, project? Yeah, definitely. So if you're getting any boxes that have been delivered to you, um, you've probably got lots of our boxes, you're going to be able to use these to cut through that as well because um, it's a deep dish um, it, because it is, it's a multimedia. So this is why I, I, I've used it. I know it's the square one and I know you can cut a square yourself, but... Um, I just I'm showing you because again you're going to do it exactly the same way with your circle you're just going to have uh, the top of your die hanging over that um, fold in your card base you're going to do it with your circles you're going to do it with your squares um, you're going to be doing it if you want into um, you know have lots of um, just lots of depth and dimension but if we come back to this so this particular one I've popped onto some foam so if we quickly pop this one down uh, and again this is another thing that you can do with your nesting dies you don't just necessarily have to have um, your nesting dies all squares all circles if you put in two you're going to create these beautiful borders so if I just quickly come in with my dotty and again, and you get lots of different sizes. I think it's nine in there, isn't it, that you get? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So loads of different um, options. So there's lots in there, definitely. I think nesting dies are definitely one of those um, things that, um, again, it sits on my desk all the time. All of my nesting dies, and we've got so, so many of them. Uh, they absolutely all sit on my desk because. Um, it's a very nice, simple, effective way just to add a lot of interest to a card in a very, very simple way. So even just with those three here, even though it's all the same black card, because mm -hmm. I've just raised that middle one on some foam pads, it again just gives it an absolute different effect. And then again, I think, so we forget. We just mat and layer them up all the same way. Yeah. We forget just by adding that little bit of a twist, it just looks so, so different. And I like the fact that you're using your favourite colours again. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I've definitely got um, a colour theme going on today, haven't definitely. I? Definitely. But it's I, good because they're all colours that I like too. Yeah. I love, I love black with anything, to be honest, but black and pinks. Um, is one of my favourites, definitely. 
but black and white just on its own is so it's so classy mm. so let's just twist that last one so just with that middle bit that's raised you have got a beautiful simple card um really elevated i think to the next level just with these nesting dies yeah i totally agree with you then they look really good and they um like saying doing everything sort of off center or uh, twisting it it almost gives you like um I always think of like the Cheshire Cat yes. in um, Alice in Wonderland when they, you know, it's all like, ooh, you've got a yeah. crazy kind of um, look to it. And yeah. it works really, really well. Um, yeah. and, and I think I, if I'm right in saying the tiniest one, um, everything sort of works in, in conjunction with each other, don't they? But if you just twist everything, they're all still going to fit together. They do. That's, sort of touch. Yeah, yeah, that's the lovely thing about it. They are all perfectly... Um, Perfect. Well, they're going to be perfectly sized. I know that sounds <laughs> daft, but yeah, they're perfectly sized to all work beautifully. Um, I love these dies. So if you haven't got any nesting dies, definitely get these because for one, you can be cutting out lots of layers all at once because it is a deep dish die. And then you've got them there and you can be using them for other things as well. So your soft crafts, um, you know, for if you're making anything 3D, um, these are absolutely brilliant for that. Yeah, I totally agree. Linda Lewis says, Michelle and Becky, you're so, both so lovely and a pleasure to watch. Happy Christmas. Thanks very much. Yeah. Your 50 pounds will be in the post to you yeah, for I saying that to us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mary Reno says, oh, I love that tote bag, Becky. It looks really good, doesn't it? I didn't make it, so I can't. Uh, that's why I can say it looks really good. Um, but it is the, the great, great samples that we've got. Um, Carolyn says, such a pretty pillow and bag. Rachel B says, I have enough of your boxes to build a bungalow. I have no idea why I have so many. It might be something to do with birthday week. And Georgiana says, hi, Becky and Michelle from Clearwater, Florida. OK, who's having a stag do? It's George. It's George. Yeah, everyone's invited. Or we, might even, we might even broadcast it. This is your ditzy rectangle. Um, you can see here you've got three different dies um, to create this. And Michelle's going to show us what you can do with it, aren't you? I am. So these Ditsy florals, again, one of my absolute favourites. But what I love about this is it is a nesting die, but it's not a nesting die where we think we've got three mats and layers. You've got a beautiful frame with this. So it cuts on the outside, but it also cuts on the inside. So and you've got three and all three have got the same pattern running through these. So let's pop a few on here. So I've got some of my lovely pearlescent cardstock. I'm going to pop that one on there. Just tape it in place. We're going to pop this one on here. And again, I'm going to tape it in place. I don't want any of my dice to move. And then we'll pop this last one on here and tape it down. And then we're going to run them through it. And you can see that all three fit onto my plate absolutely perfectly i couldn't have judged that better if i had tried um it absolutely is perfect fit perfectly yeah absolutely so there is a few more in um this particular die set there's a few more with different uh, decorative elements but all with that frame nesting die rather than uh, just a mat and layer nesting die so let's pop all three of these off pop that on there and let's take this off so you can see you've got that lovely matte layer piece on the inside if that is what you're wanting but that is my lovely frame and again so using what we would consider the waist let me just pop that off you've got that lovely matte layer effect there but we're not going to be using that we're going to be using that lovely frame effect so for me with these you don't necessarily or at all need to do anything else to these. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my um, piece of card. Let me just give that a good burnish. And you're going to build these up. So that is going to go perfectly on my 5x7 card. Okay. I've got the lemon that's going to fit in there. And you've got that beautiful border of the white card coming through. And then if I pop that one right in the middle you have got that beautiful frame effect with that die set. 
absolutely stunning, very, very effective. Here are some more samples to show you the type of things you can do with these beautiful dies. So it's a set of three dies you're going to be getting here. Um, the top biggest one is five by seven, and this is your ditzy rectangle nesting die. I do love, I am loving your colour palette today. I think most of the stuff that I've used today has come from, in fact, let me, oh, it's just here, let me show you, because this is one of my absolute favourite paper pads, so it is this one. It is the mixed um, cardstock, so it's your pastels, this one, and it's got textured card in there and pearlescent, and it's a 250, so it's a perfect uh, GSM as well, but it's absolutely one of my favourites. I just, I love... Do you know, I love a pastel, but I also love something that's really bright as well, as daft as it sounds. So let me just, what you're going to do with these is, I'm just going to bring in my dotty tape pen. We're just going to tape it down in place. Uh, and do you know what, with these, you don't need to do a lot to these. They are quite simple and elegant. So I think if you're going to be popping these on a card, you're going to keep it sort of quite simple and elegant mm. because you've got the white card that is popping back through that beautiful um, ditzy um, die cut there, which is, I just, I love it. So what have we got next? So I can either pop my yellow in. I've got another couple um, cut out next to me, but what I can do is if I pop that one there, let's pop that round to tell you what we'll, ooh. It's very reminiscent of Bourgeois Anglais, isn't it? You know, yes. the kind of um, it, the, the cotton with the eyelet embroidery that you get, you know, particularly for children. It's very reminiscent of that. It is, yeah, definitely. Def so let's tape that one down. I'll tell you what we're going to do. So this is the waist from the middle of this one, if you remember. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pop that in the middle there. But uh, let's pop it on a couple of foam pads just to show you what it looks like. And again, I know I'm adding that depth and dimension, but it's such a simple way to give your card a little bit of a, an elevation. And then, again, so I'm gonna use my dotty. Actually, I could, I could put the pink or the blue on that one. I think I'm gonna go blue though. Sometimes it's just so difficult to decide. So, there we go. So just by using what is technically the waist, mm. just to add a lovely little bit of depth on there, um, how simple but elegant does yeah. that look? I don't think you need much more else no. um, to these to make Would it look good. Would you think that that was quite a good option for someone that hasn't got nesting dies before? Maybe yes. that's just sort of starting on their sort of crafting journey because you can make something really simple and, and really effective very quickly, can't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and especially these ones, because you've got the frame element. So um, you are almost getting twice the amount for your money. You are getting three matte and layer pieces, which is technically the waste, but you're also getting the three frames. So you, I think you're getting twice as much for your money with these, um, definitely. So these are definitely one I would go for if you've never mm. uh, used them before. Um, we have got a question. Um, how do you use the multimedia dies with card? What are the configurations for the plates? Um, so these, these ones that I uh, used before, they are um, a matte and layer die, so they're just a big square. Um, you don't necessarily have to have your magnetic shimming, especially if you're cutting through more than one layer of a 300 GSM. So have your outside plate on the bottom. You're going to have your die and your two or three layers of card. And then you're going to have your plastic one. And I would leave your magnetic one out. And then I would put your top plate on. Um, because you've got two or three layers of a 300 GSM card, mm -hmm. you don't need the extra depth with this. Okay. So I would def that's the one you're going to leave out. If you feel that it's not quite cut through, if you've got like three layers or something thick, add a shim of card rather than your magnetic one back in. Um, but if you add your magnetic in and it's a little bit too thick for your machine, it's just not going to take it. Your machine will stop it and it will uh, spit it, it won't literally spit it back out <laughs> at you. But it'll pop back out of the front because be, it won't be happy with it. So you'll know then to add a little, a little less um, depth. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the other question, um, Mary Reno says it's so pretty, Michelle. I love the pastels too. I think the colours are great. Um, Karen says, do you need fabric plates to use these nesting dies? I'll take that one if that's okay. Yes, absolutely. Um, because I do use them quite regularly. If you're going to be using them for cutting fabric, you, you should having the fabric plates is absolutely ideal because um, they are two very thick layers of metal um, that you put through your machine. So you have your clear plate, you have your metal um, fabric plate, you have your fabric, then you have your die facing down, you have the other metal fabric plate, and then you have your clear plate on top. Um, I use my fabric plates even when I'm cutting card because I can't be bothered to go and get all the other plates. Now, if you don't have your fabric plates, it doesn't matter. You can make do with what you've got in your normal Gemini. Um, so what you would do is you would have your clear plate you would have your metal shim then you would put your fabric down you will put your um, die over the top of that and then you put your frosted um, plastic shim over the top and then your clear plate over that and put it through and you'll be able to cut multiple layers of fabric so with the fabric plates we say six to eight layers of fabric um, probably a little bit less by using the other sort of Gemini plates but yeah definitely well worth doing um, if you're going to be using those um, for all sorts of different activities as well as cutting fabric um, Charlotte says are they good for cutting out for good for cutting out use behind pa background papers to save the waste that's great so so gutting um, your mats and layers which we all should do and yes we, we don't, don't always no. do it do we no but yes absolutely perfect for that um, and yeah it is it's one of them things that I de definitely should do especially when you've got your favorite card or your favorite paper um, and you want into um, yeah ha make it go as far as you can so yeah brilliant shout definitely yeah This is your inverted stitch lace circle. Uh, beautiful. And um, we're going to see exactly how to use this with Michelle. So, yes, so the inverted stitch, um, exactly what it says, your stitch um, lace edge is inverted. So you've got four um, sizes with this. You've got a matte piece and then you have this piece. Um, it's got that lovely stitch edge here and then you've got that um, scallop which is inverted so it's in, on the inside rather than on the outside and you've got that with all four layers so let's just pop that to the side and again I'll bring my plates in and we'll run these through so let's pop the yellow one here and again I'm going to tape these into place because I don't want them to move as I'm running them through my machine and then we'll bring in the purple or the lilac and again we'll do exactly the same let's just tape that so they don't move let me get just another little bit of tape for this side and we'll just pop those two through for now so um these are going to go through um, your smaller machines, so they're going to go through your junior and your midi. They're not going to go through, some of them in this um, set will go through your mini, um, but you know, if you're going to be buying the whole set, you're going to at least want your midi or um, bigger. Right, so let's just pop these all off. And you can see Oh, you can see straight away because that fell out. Yeah. You've got that lovely um, stitched element there. And then you've also, again, it's almost the waste, but you're not going to use it as waste. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to have um, your main circle there and you're going to decide on which colour is going to go where. So I'm going to have that there. Beautiful and then colours. Absolutely gorgeous, aren't they? And then I'm going to bring that one in. We're going to pop that there and we are going to we're going to pop oh can't pick it up i'm going to pop that in there so you get in a decorative um side on the inside and on the outside beautiful i think they look really fascinating having that beautiful sort of lace effect so here are a few samples of these that you can see how they've been used um, with those different colors and these are our inverted stitch lace circle nesting dies. I like the fact you've got that little stitching effect around the outside as well, that extra little bit. They've really thought about these, haven't they? They have. I love these. So let me mat and lay these up and just pop a really quick card together. So um, 
With the largest one, I've just cut two circles. And all you need to do to make this into your own little card base is if I just bring in my scoreboard quickly. Um, I'm just roughly about half an inch. I'm just going to score that there. Let me just pop that under there. So you've just got a tab, and this is going to be the back of your card. So let's just tape that up and pop this on. So I'm just going to hold that together and then squish it down. So then straight away, you have got your own card base that's going to stand lovely. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a bit of a play. We're going to use these beautiful... Oh, they are so pretty. I absolutely love these. Um, you always tend to think that your, your decorative element's going to be on the outside. Yeah. But the fact that this is inverted... It draws um, your eye in, doesn't it? So it works, yes. you know, when you've got a particular sentiment to go in that middle, having yeah. all of that intricacy around the inside is going to draw your eye in. Yes, definitely. So let's pick this up and pop that on. Just want to wiggle it in place. But again, I mean, I've cut lots of bits out here and none of them are going to go to waste because what I don't use on this, you're going to pop it in your little box that you've got at home that's got all sorts of bits and bobs in and you're going you're gonna to keep them. You're not going to get rid of them at all. So I look, do you know what that looks like, a sun? It does. Does that, can you see that? It almost looks like a sun, doesn't it? Yeah. So again, you know... Um, the possibilities, I mean, I didn't even realise that to start with. And then when I popped that on, I was like, oh, it looks like a sun. So, again, it really sparks your imagination, does, um, does this. When I'm looking at those, I'm thinking of rosettes to wear. You know, almost like the suffragettes wore, you yes. know, those kind of rosettes. Um, super pretty. They look, actually, it looks quite Victorian, the way you've got those scalloped edges um, on there, that lace effect, doesn't it? It really does. Absolutely. So this big one, I'm going to pop back in. So it's literally, again, almost like the, the waist bit, but I'm going to pop it back in. So even on one level now, I've got those three cards coming through. I've got that lovely textured on the inside, and then that's all the pearlescent on the outside. And then you can build it up. So I'm going to pop this on here. And um, it's going to, you're going to almost think, oh, that's way too busy. But once it's all done, it looks fabulous. So let's, and I'm not going to be using any foam pads because these. That's not like you. I know. <laughs> I, as I've said that, you know I'm going to use them. And I'm going to be like, mm, that next one needs it. So I'm going to pop that back in there. So let me just get my poker tool to get it back out. Let's tape this down. And they slot back in so easily. There we go, pop that one in there. And then what is my next size down? It's this one, isn't it? So dotty for that one. I didn't plan on putting them all back on, but as I've started doing it, I'm thinking, actually, that's going to look really pretty. So, it does, it looks, it looks lovely. Yeah. So I'm actually, let's pop the yellow one back in. Let me just, there we go. So let me just, so normal tape pen for this one. So actually, you're just coming along while I'm just having a play at the minute, so. <laughs> That's just, the best kind of crafting, yeah, isn't it? It is, it definitely crafting is. Crafting without a plan. So let's pop that last one back on the top. Um, and I love how small these go as well. I mean, this is just, what is it, roughly, it's an inch and a half. I love the fact that it goes so small all the way up to the top. There we go. And if I wanted to pop, I, do you know what? I you told you. You're going to go for a foam pad? Yes. <laughs> it, it feels like that last little bit needs it. So we will do it. But even on that last little bit, you've still got that, that deckled edge um, on there. So I'm going to pop that right in the middle on there. But um, so you've got... That is an amazing yeah. um, card blank. You, all you need on that, you need a little butterfly, a tiny little sentiment on the bottom, mm -hmm. and you've got a, a very unique and very different 
card face there. That is beautiful, absolutely. And I love the fact that you've layered um, that up. On the, some of the samples that we've got here um, that we can have a little look at, um, you can see how we've just had, uh, just using parts of that die. So not using all of those different parts, but like you said, um, you can pop them all away and use them for other things because you're going to be cutting out so many different shapes in here, bits that you would assume were the waste, um, don't need to be the waste, they could be used for other um, bits and pieces. So they do look really, really different using all those different colours and using the different colours and different parts of it to layer everything up. So really spectacular um, design. Um, now we've got uh, Mary Reno says, um, love the inverted scallop dies, and sh but Charlotte says, are these nesting dies in the same collection? I'm not entirely sure what you mean in the, in the same collection. They are part, um, we you know it's one, it's one collection with these nesting dies. The other nesting dies we're doing today aren't all part of one whole collection. They're all separate collections. Is that, do you think that's what um, she I, th I think that's what, yeah. if that's what she's, yes. So, um, do you know what? You, all you keep seeing is the back of my head today, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Ditsy florals that I used a little bit earlier, um, they're a totally separate collection to these. So these are your inverted um, stitch. But if you go to our website and you just put in nesting dies, it's going to bring them all up. It's going to bring these up. It's going to bring these up. It's going to bring everything up I'm using today, nesting die wise, and a few more. So um, have a good look, um, you know, at what's in stock. But there's definitely lots of different ones on there for you. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Um, for holidays, designs said um, how pretty are all these colours look. They remind me of um, ice cream. Like anyone that has ever watched me on shows knows, I always revert back to food. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it does look like it does look like sweets or ice cream, all those different colours. And Charlotte says it's fun to have just a play and let your imagination take over. Absolutely true. I mean, I think if you are creative in any kind of way, um, you will, um, you know, you don't follow a format. Um, you sort of want to sort of play. And actually, you might think, oh, I'm going to put a bow here. And when you start putting it together, you're like, it's not working. I'm going to put something else there. So it's all part of that whole process um, that we do in order to um, create something thing that's unique um, but I do love the idea of doing a circular card that's not something I've done before um, I have to do a circular envelope oh that'd be tricky Ooh, no, no thank you no. Just, <laughs> just, just, just pop it in a square just one just pop it in a square yeah. one but but again so making your card bases I mean you saw me cut out two separate circles with those but if you've got our uh, circle nesting dies and mixed media ones and multimedia you're going to be able to cut through both sides of um, your card at once to create a card where you don't have to add, mm. add that tab yourself yeah that's a good idea This is our Amalfi Advanced Nesting Dies. You've got four different, one, two, three, three different dies here. Um, we're going to overlay those and make really pretty ornate designs. So Michelle is going to show us exactly how to put something together using this. So the Amalfi is, um, there's no need for me to tell you again that this is one of my favourites because it's a nesting die and they're absolutely beautiful. So if I just pop that out for this one, bring this in so you can see you have got those three dies on there you've got that large one and then you have these two smaller ones and again each one has got a totally different decorative element to it but play together beautifully so it's not a pattern on here that you you're going to be oh it doesn't go with that because it absolutely does and um, they're all going to go together absolutely beautiful so let's pop these on here so I'm going to cut this one out of here. I'm going to cut that one out of there. And we're going to pop that on there. And again, I'm putting a few, in fact, i tell you what we will do. Let's take this and pop that in there. And let's cut those two out together. So let me bring in a couple of pieces of tape to keep that in place. And then we'll just, we'll pop that to the side and we'll tape this one down there we go right so let's run this through our machine um, again for these they're going to go through your junior uh, if they're going to go through your junior you know that they're going to go through your midi because it's the same plate size uh, so for your midis um, um, not electrical and your junior is it's an electronic machine right so let's get this off let's just pop that there 
pop that one there. So if I just pop this off, you can see that you've got that beautiful. Um, just pull that out very carefully. So if I pop that on there, you can see how beautiful that is. So intricate. Yes, they, they so are. So let's just pull the tape off of this one. And again, pop that middle out. Let's, um, oh, we're just a little stuck. There we go. Pop it that way. Sometimes, just, just with the pressure of the Gemini, sometimes these don't want to pop out. So let me just, that's it. Sometimes you just need to give a bit of a tap to help loosen um, it up and it comes out, there we go. So that is the middle piece, but we didn't want that. What I wanted to do was I wanted to cut the middle out of this. So I will pop this off very quickly. And you can see as I'm peeling it off, um, it's, uh, it's coming out beautifully. So if I just show you that, um, you can see that beautiful. I'm not gonna pop all those out for you because you don't want to see me popping all that out. But if I bring this in, you can see a finished piece. So using that second die to cut out that lovely matte layer in the middle, it means we can do this. It means I can bring this next one in and I can layer the pink in the middle of, of instead. And then it means what I can do then is get the black one, layer that on the top if I want to. Um, I can be popping any of these on foam pads if I want. But that is how easy it is to make a really beautiful card with the, the Amalfi nesting dies. Lovely how ornate that is. So here are a few more samples. You can see how they, they've been put together um, using those beautiful dies. Um, using and those different colours makes a real um, change in those using craft card as well in here. So these have all been made using our Amalfi advanced nesting dies. I would use these with black all the time. I think it works really well with black, doesn't it? But even wedding cards in white, white on white or white on cream, yes. it would be lovely having that lacy effect. Yeah, definitely. And the thing is, um, we've got, I'm going to say a few shades of, of white or black. We haven't. We've got our matte black and then we've got our Centura Pearl black. We've got our glitter black, which is, have you seen our glitter black? Yeah. I said, oh, that is the most beautiful black um, I think I've ever seen. Um, so you don't, if you don't just have to have a matte black, and it's the same with our white card. We've got this beautiful white stamping on multi-purpose card, um, but we've also got quite a few shades of our Centura Pearl with a hint of silver or mm -hmm. the hint of snow white. So again, you've got many choices of, of, of a white and a black. Um, but let me bring in my dotty. Let's pop this just on and if here. If you were using this, you wanted to use it with some of our glitter cards. Um, how will it still cut all those intricate dies with the glitter card? It will. It will still cut um, your glitter card, no problem. Um, if I am cutting a really intricate die like this with my glitter card, I'll add. Uh, don't necessarily always need to, but I'll add my metal shim. Right. Um, because you've got that metal on metal, and it, it's. Um, cutting through because it's got a coating on it because it, it's an encapsulated glitter um, so with that coating on sometimes to have your metal straight into metal it gives it such a clean um, cut where sometimes when sometimes when you're poking those little bits out and you have to maybe just pull a few you're not going to get that with the metal on metal you're going to get a perfect perfect cut all the way through right and the, the sandwich would be your clear plate, your metal plate, then your um, dark, your paper, your card, your paper, yeah. so card, your die facing downwards. Yeah. Have then you... your magnetic shim over the top of that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Then your clear plate over the top of that. That's it. Okay. Yeah. And again, um, everyone's machine is gonna vary the tiniest little bit, just by nature of what they are. So get used to your machine. Um, I know that um, with our machines here at work, it's slightly different to my machine at home. Mm -hmm. I mean, my machine at home is an absolute workhorse. I think I've had it about, in fact, I think it came up on my timeline line a little while ago. You know, those reminders, yeah. you, you know, uh, I think I've had it about five years. Really? So I've had it a really long time. I keep saying to people, oh, I've had my machine a couple of years and I've still got my <laughs> original plates. 
It isn't. It's nearly five years, and I do still have wow. my original plates. Wow, I that's impressive. I obviously have trekked myself to new ones along the way, but um, because it would be rude not to, wouldn't it? Absolutely, totally <laughs> would be rude. Uh, but yeah, you know, look after your machine. I'd say flip and rotate your plates, but you know. I'm not going to because I, I don't. I always forget. I do. And like, then I remember and then, you know, they are, you know, I've, I've missed the opportunity. Yeah. Is what I would probably say. Um, yes. With that. But you leave uh, it too long. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But which is why I always, always use the hot water trick. So okay. Again, um, if uh, you've probably heard me say this many times, I know all of us, I think, do it. Except for Leanne, because Leanne is like absolutely brilliant and flips and rotates all of her plates. But for the rest of us mere mortals, yeah. <laughs> um, your two outside plates, just put them in your sink, fill it up with hot water from your kettle, and they're just going to go flat. You're going to watch them go flat. Uh, and the bonus is all those paper fibres that you've got embedded in your plate uh -huh. come out as well. They're going to go flat. You're going to take them out. You're going to put them on. Obviously, be careful of the hot water. Um, you're going to put them on the side and what I do is I've got a work saver at home, a worktop saver and it's like a granite so it's really heavy. Okay. So I put that on top of my plates and then I put my machine on top of my plates and I leave them there overnight. Okay. Just once they've cooled down, um, they're, as, they're as straight as the day you bought them wow. and that's why okay. I've still got my original plates. That's handy to know. Yeah. 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 Um, so when I say take them out of the hot water, Get your husband to take them out of the hot water because that's what I normally do. <laughs> like, Ben, it's too hot. Come and do it for me. <laughs> and then you've got a bowl of hot water to do the washing up with. That's it, yeah? Genius. Exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah. while you're there, Ben, do you just want to yeah. do that bit of washing up? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to message in now and go, that's why you always ask me to get the things down. <laughs> he is. He is. Uh, so, but what I love about this one is, so you're going to have this portrait Oh, you're going to have it landscape and it looks as beautiful either way, just with that little pop of pink on there. Brilliant. I love that. Um, we do have so a few people messaging in. Lillian Kwok, we were talking about the colours. She said they remind her of refreshes. They do, or love hearts. Yes, They're they all do. those kind of colours, aren't those, they? Those pinks and blues, yellows, yeah. And actually, we've got <coughs> heart-shaped nesting dyes as well, so you could do proper... Um, no, love heart um, things on your cards. You absolutely mm. could, yes. Because again, some love heart nesting dies, they go yep. all the way down to about an inch, they an do. inch and a half. Yeah, so absolutely. Perfect for that. Um, Linda Vaquez, Vaquez, I can't say it, Vaquez, so, so, hello <laughs> Becky and Michelle. Um, I have a question. If you have a die that has embossing features, how would you emboss that in the midi? Can you do it in the midi? Um, to get your emboss to pop more in your midi, because obviously you've got, it's just the in, the folder, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what I would suggest is, mm, I'm not sure. Let me think about it. Maybe add an, just an extra shim of card um, to get it to pop through more. Um, so if so I still run, use that little folder. Yeah, so you, let me just grab mine, just so I've got a visual for myself. Um, so you've got, I, I just want to keep showing you the back of my new hairdo. That's all it is. <laughs> I'm not really getting things. I'm just showing you my hair. Um, so yeah, so if I've got my die and I've got my piece of card and I'm going to run it through. If I want the emboss to pop through a little bit more, just add an extra one shim of card for now. So pop those in um, and that extra shim of card is going to make it it's going to make it bulge through those elements okay. a little bit more. Um, so you might have to have a little play with an extra one or two shims of card, but that is how I would do it. Yeah, definitely. Um, as a question from me, okay. um, would you ever cut um, things using your dies and cut multiple layers? Would you ever do that or would you always... Is it just a false economy to think, well, I'm going to save myself and I'm going to run these two pieces of card through at the same time? Is it um, a, you know, really? No, if we, if you've got if you've got dies that don't have a really intricate uh, detailing on it, mm -hmm. um, you can run it through. And our normal thin metal dies are going to cut through a couple of layers anyway. Okay. Um, my nesting dies at home that are just normal nesting dies cut through at least two layers of our three hundred GSM card. 
Um, so yeah, but if it's something more intricate, I'm not going to try and cut through more no. than one layer at a time. No, I've, I've probably, you're probably right, I shouldn't really do that, should I? If it's a thinner cardstock or a paper, absolutely. Yeah. So even these intricate ones, if I want to cut two pieces of um, some of our paper stock, it's going to go through perfectly. Brilliant. Um, we've got, Carolyn says, I love this set of dies. Rachel, um, a, a super, Rachel Superstar Media, super, 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 you know what I mean, social superstar, says um, when you're washing, you know, putting your, your plates in that hot water, um, it's great, apart from there's always bits of floating around the water that get stuck to your cups. Yeah, It's probably true. Um, probably and not Betty the says best it's a great idea. tip. Um, to be able to do that. I, I, I haven't tried that yet. I probably will give that a whirl when I get home. Um, or maybe if someone's work, watching at home, maybe you want to do that with my, my plates that I've got at home. <laughs> they won't even know what I'm talking about. No. They've got no idea. No. They'll, be, they'll be washing up the plates in the kitchen. No, yeah. they wouldn't be doing that. I, I mean, I've got to say, though, it doesn't work on any of your other plates. It's just your two outside ones. Uh, and the thing is, unfortunately, for any machine that you buy on the market, your plates are a consumable. So at some point, mm. you're going to need to replace them anyway. So your others in there, it's not going to work for at all. But your two outside plates, it's absolutely going to work for. So if you're going to, if you're saving money by, you know, doing that with your outside plates, it just means you don't mind so much having to replace maybe yeah. your magnetic or your plastic shim. Or we should all be like Leanne and rotate them. Yes. Because uh, if you're rotating, yeah. it's going to make your other shims uh, not bendy yeah. as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I think <laughs> no, I, I can't be like the Anne. I, I bash my dies, uh, which, you, which you're yeah. not supposed to do, and no. I also don't rotate my rotate my um, um, <laughs> plates. Unfortunately, no. never mind. Uh, the odd times that I try, yeah, um, exactly. I forget where I'm at, so I, d I just I give up as a bad job. <laughs> So here we have our Yuletide Blooms. These are our Christmas nesting dies. You've got four different dies there, very intricate. And we're going to see from Michelle how to use these. Uh, so yes, Yuletide Bloom. There's, again, there's a few in this collection, um, but this is one of my favourites. I love the poinsettia. Um, so what I absolutely love about this, it's a square die, but you've got that circle aperture in the middle, which I absolutely love. So that is your main die. You have got the smaller one that's going to go in the middle and you have an even smaller one, but you also have this beautiful poinsettia one in the middle. So what we're going to do is I've got a couple of pieces of card here. So we're going to pop this one on here. And I'm going to do something similar to what I did before. We're going to take this one down and I'm going to bring this circle one into the middle and I'm going to run them through together. Okay. So again, if, um, if you are doing this, I always advise to tape your dies down. Um, if one goes over the other, the likelihood is it's not necessarily going to damage it, but why take the risk when we can just tape it down straight away? Right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to pop this through. And again, so I could be using uh, my junior plates on here because that's going to fit on my junior plates. And again, so it takes the, the cutting time down from 18 seconds um, to nine seconds if you're using your smaller plates. Um, it's it's uh, neither here or there because 18 seconds really isn't that long to wait anyway. So let's pop this off and move this to the side so again let me bring in my poker tool and remove all that uh, low tack high tack tape <laughs> so the only thing with your, your because you run it through your machine it can make it stick yep. so you just need to be a little bit careful when you are removing your tape so let me give this so you can see that that's peeling off straight away there we go let me just give when they're quite intricate you just need to tease them out sometimes there you go so i have got that beautiful circle in the middle um, i'm going to get rid of let's get rid of that it's just stuck a little bit by some of those curly bits so you're just going to gently tease them away so this is uh, my middle bit and i'm going to bring this one in because I've already popped some foam pads onto that. So let's move that to the side. So that is that um, 
centre one, which again is absolutely beautiful. You can bring that one in and create an aperture in that one if you also wish. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to do is I'm going to pop that one on there and I've cut the smallest one out of some glitter. So what we're going to do is we're going to layer these up invertedly. So this middle one is going to glue flat down in the middle of this piece of card. Okay. This one we're going to put onto one layer of foam pads. So let me just cut a couple of these. So if you're at home, you're going to put a lot more foam on than me. But just for speed to show you. So that is going to just pop around there and we're going to make sure that I've got my pattern matching. And then if I bring in this one that's got the double layer of foam pads and pop that on there, you can see it draws your eye right into the middle with that nesting die. Absolutely gorgeous, really like that. Here are a couple of samples so you can see what that looks like with that poinsettia in the middle and some of that mirror card in there. And then this one using white um, here as a little um, shaker card. So these are made using the Yuletide Bloom Christmas nesting dies. And these are also, you could actually sort of cut into these, couldn't you? So when you've got all of these different um, areas, almost like sort of ferns down here, you could cut into those and make a kind of wreath for Christmas, couldn't you? That would work really well. Um, we could do all sorts of different things with these different aspects of these dies. You can. You can do so many things um, with these. So I'm just adding a couple more foam pads to this one because it, it had a saggy bottom. We don't, we don't like, like a saggy bottom. No. No saggy bottoms, no saggy middles, no saggy bits. What is it? Nothing. Mary, Mary Brady, she doesn't, she doesn't like a soggy bottom, does she? Soggy bottom, that's it. I mean, it. I don't like a soggy bottom either. Um, <laughs> or a saggy bottom. Soggy, saggy, <laughs> nothing. No. So I'm just going to line that, um, that pattern up beautifully. There we go. And I never really, I didn't even take my foam pads off this. So let's take it off now so I can can stick it down on there and I can lift it up for you to see a little bit better so just so this is what I'm using on this one is our foam on a roll the really big foam that's um, what for is, our shakers um, <laughs> what is it foam it's foam on a roll 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 hey <laughs> <laughs> i hope I everyone is singing along <laughs> it's, it, it's a, a welcome change from us singing the christmas um, songs that we sang earlier today and maybe you're cri singing christmas carols at home um actually i've done a playlist for christmas carols but i haven't <laughs> called it christmas carols i've called it um i'm gonna have to look at i've called it vorderman a carpenter and um what was the other one vorderman Carpenter and Decker, after oh. all the carols. Carol uh. Vorderman, Carol Decker, <laughs> and Carol, Carol Carpenter. Have I got that right? Is it Carol Carpenter? No. I think it was Carol, Carol Carpenter. Carpenter. Um, but yeah, uh, so um, I know we should... And Karen Carpenter. Karen Carpenter, that was it. Oh, I nearly got it right. So that, that playlist <laughs> will show up on my children's phones, and they'll think, what on earth is this? Because uh, uh, it doesn't yeah, look like Yeah, because of the playlist, yeah. yeah. Carol Decker. Carol, Carol Decker, do you want to yeah. Decker? Nearly. Two out of three ain't bad. Oh, another song. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll not sing that one to you either. Um, so I've, I've, I've layered this third one on top, but because I've matched my pattern up here, I've actually gone off, um, off kilter. But again, I actually don't mind that. If you're going to mat and layer that onto a card, it's going to look beautiful. But um, it, it goes in rather than up and out. Yeah. So you've got the... Obviously, the middle one is in. Um, and again, it's just a different way to do it. And I think it just looks fabulous. Yeah, it's nice to have something a little bit different to yeah, see. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Linda says, thank you so much, Michelle, for that idea about embossing in the, in the midi. I'm going to um, try that. I love CCTV. Um, Charlotte mm. says, this is beautiful. The collection is on its way to me. Um, and so beautiful with a mirror card. I think it really lends itself to the mirror card. And you've used a little bit of, little bit of sparkle, a little bit of shimmer um, throughout that little card there. Um, Coletta says, hello all, taking a break from the Christmas tree 
lovely decoration to pop in. Hello. Linda says saggy bits and she's laughing. <laughs> uh, and Charlotte says, brilliant. Me and my daughter, Gracie, were singing along. I do apologise for making, you know, you listen to us singing on a Saturday night. Yep. But, I mean, you know, what is a Saturday night for if not singing? It's all about Absolutely. Party. Yeah. Now, normal Saturday nights when I may have had one or two drinks mm -hmm. and then I'm singing, that's something no one wants to hear. <laughs> even if I'm a little tipsy, I know not to sing. Really? Karaoke is I anything. Even I know, no, don't get Michelle up there. What, what would be your song of choice? Um, oh, I don't know. I like a little bit of I Will Survive. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, uh, or um, what is it? That Turn Around Bright Eyes. <gasps> um, oh, that, that song. I haven't heard that yeah. in years. Or okay. Journey. Yeah. Small town. I mean, when I've had a drink, you're a small town girl living in a lonely world. Can I just say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, you've got. Do you know what? You've, it's Saturday night. Give me another hour, and we'll all be singing together. <laughs> <laughs> had a lovely time with Michelle. And uh, Michelle's still with me tonight. Um, going home tomorrow, so we're going to yeah. have a bit of a party, a bit of a boogie um, in the house. Um, so yeah, we'll come back back to ours. Um, but perhaps. Not, Jamie with his singing. No. So I don't think he was particularly good. I'm sorry, Jamie. I'm sorry. Uh, he did do a little bit of Oliver Twist um, earlier today, and that was excellent. And I will record that so you can see that a little bit later, because that was really good. Um, but do, I hope you enjoy today.